to tell us about some of your childhood memories from Chennai because uh, you spoke a little bit about how you know you also wanted your sons to grow up with some of those yeah. uh, experiences what stands out in your mind still well you know it's not really childhood but um, I was in Chennai when I was four, sorry 15 16 so two years yeah and before that barely had any recollection of Chennai before that you were in school so before I was yeah. in school and I was I was here till I was three years old. Right. But um, look, Chennai is a, is a city that's, um, it's amazing. There are many things which are still stuck in time. And people are just genuinely very nice. You know, it's a, it's a lot more conservative as a city. Right. You know, I have one memory. And, uh, you know, I came out of boarding school. And the reason I actually came back to Chennai was you're in the middle of nowhere and you're not exposed to you know, in my boarding school, I didn't have TV. Yeah. I didn't have radios. You know, had access to computers, you know, once in a while. Mm -hmm. I came back to Chennai and, you know, I was living, uh, you know, on my own and I had to go to school. And I took the bus, right. the public bus. Right. And, um, you know, for the first week, I was so late to school, like three hours late. And it's always because I'd come to the bus and if I see a, you know, a woman or a child, I'll say, please, after you, after you, and I'd end up missing that bus. Right. I actually remember <laughs> the bus number, it's 29C. And you know, the, the next bus would come and there'd be people hanging over and I'd say, okay, I'll take the next one maybe. And you know, I had a reality check in terms of that. And I always remember this memory because right after that, you know, I got a motorbike. And you know, actually, it's, it's a lot better. I made it to school on time. But um, in terms of, you know, what you feel that the Indian consumer wants, mm -hmm. um, what would be the basic things when you're planning such a consumer-centric uh, yeah. product? Mm -hmm. What are the essential ingredients uh, that you feel are required? I think what the consumer really wants, you know, you have the current flying population, which have a set of needs which are maybe different from the ones who don't fly today. The ones who don't fly today, I believe, really want an airlines which can be affordable right not cheap but affordable right. and I think uh, they want it affordable but not having a, 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 a cattle carrier they want an airlines which is has all the service that you would get with a full-fledged carrier and that's what I'm willing to give it's a brand new plane which is rolling off the lines from France mm -hmm. Airbus 320s you know these are large planes these aren't your small little you know, um, small little planes with propellers. We got leather seats. We got great food on board. I, I encourage everyone to try this food because I personally tasted every, every part of that menu. Right. And it's catered towards a regional community. And we don't have a curtain which differentiates classes. Right. But we do have seats which have, you know, a little bit more comfort. If you choose to, you know, want to have arrive in style. You could go get a buggy cart, which will come pick you up, drop you at the airlines, add a little bit more for fare. So it's all about being accessible to everyone. Another question that I think is prevalent on anyone's mind when you hear of a new business starting up today is also just purely the timing, given the, the kind of slowing down in growth that India has been seeing, the kind of turn in foreign investment or foreign yeah. sentiment. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think of that or what's your opinion? Because um, you've seen it from both sides. I think it's the right time for us. It's the right time for India to have a new airlines. Because I think, you know, the, the dynamics are changing such that you're having, you know, a few people who are in a lot of trouble and you have a new person who's going to come on board and it's going to probably bring a lot more discipline in the market. And I'm, I'm very excited that we're the ones who are going to hopefully do that. And I hear that you're also getting a lot of offers to go back to the fashion world. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's coming back and you know? I never thought it would come back. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, there was a time in the US when I almost joined, uh, I went, I was acting and uh, I was supposed to be part of a TV program. Right. The TV program's really big now, so it would have Which been an one? entirely okay. with CSI. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. It was our first season. Right, right. And I was casted in that, and I just said, no, you know, it's not a life for me at all. I've always wanted to be in business. This is what I'm good at. I love it. You know, it's nice to get these offers. You know, it gives you a little bit more confidence, but uh, here's where I am. Yeah. Well, Mitu, we wish you all the best, and it was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. We hope to see a lot more of you here in Bloomberg. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us good today. Good to see you. Yeah.